Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about logistic regression, what it is, when to use logistic regression, and how to run logistic regression in JASP. If you are not familiar with what JASP is, essentially it is an open source software wherein you can run statistical analysis. Before I continue, I want to invite everyone to kindly subscribe to my channel. 90% of the people who are watching my lectures and tutorials are not subscribed. So I would really appreciate it if you can help me and my channel grow by subscribing. Thank you very much. If you're familiar with linear regression or multiple regression, logistic regression is fairly easy to understand. Essentially, it is a statistical analysis that is used to analyze models like this one. So in here, we can see that there are multiple predictors and the predictors are measured as continuous variables. However, unlike multiple regression in logistic regression, the outcome variable is categorical. Particularly for this demonstration, we'll be talking about a categorical variable that only has two levels. Therefore, it is a dichotomous variable. For example, we hypothesized that family belongingness, peer belongingness, autonomy, and social capital, all of which are measured as continuous variables, can predict life satisfaction. However, life satisfaction is not measured as a continuous variable, but rather measured as a dichotomous variable having only two possible values, low life satisfaction and high life satisfaction. In this situation, we will use logistic regression to test this model. So this is our data set. We have a number of variables here. So to run logistic regression, let's go to regression and then let's choose logistic regression. Let us identify our dependent variable. Our dependent variable is life satisfaction. You will notice here that the program expects that we enter a categorical or an ordinal variable. So life satisfaction we put here and then our predictors or covariates we put here. So we have family belongingness, peer belongingness, autonomy, and social capital. There are other things that we can specify. So if we go to statistics, let's click on standardized regression coefficients. Let's also click on multicollinearity diagnostics. So these are our results. Let's first take a look at our multicollinearity diagnostics. So this basically looks into our predictors. What we want is that our predictors are not strongly related with one another. And considering that our VIF are relatively small, nothing exceeds three, it seems that there is no multicollinearity in our data. Similar to multiple regression, there are two results that we have to pay attention in this particular output. The first one is the model summary, particularly this second row. And then the next one is the individual contribution. So the model summary essentially provides information as to how all of our four predictors collectively explain our outcome variable, which is life satisfaction. Specifically, we want to look into the R squared values. You can see here that there are four different R squared values, but let's stick with the conventional, which is the Cox and Snell R squared. So we have here 0.132. To better appreciate this, we can express this in percentage form, which is 13.2%. So what this means is that 13.2% of the variance in life satisfaction can be explained by our four predictors as a collective. And then let's try to look at our individual predictors, family belongingness, peer belongingness, autonomy, social capital. So we have here several values. The first one is the estimate, particularly this is the unstandardized regression estimate. And then we have the standard error for these unstandardized regression estimate. And then to put all of those in the same scale, we have some sort of conversion. So these are your standardized regression coefficients. Typically, this is what we report in our write-up. And then, we have here the p-values that indicates 
the significance of the unique contributions of these predictors. So considering that our alpha is 0 0.05, we can see that three out of the four predictors are significant, particularly family belongingness, peer belongingness, and social capital significantly predict life satisfaction. Furthermore, these variables predict life satisfaction in a positive manner, considering that the valence of our estimates are positive. So that means to say that higher family belongingness, higher peer belongingness, and higher social capital predicts higher life satisfaction as well. We should also note that although autonomy did not reach significance, it's close to significance uh, at 0 0.059, so that's also something that you can consider to report. Similarly, autonomy also seems to be a positive predictor, although like what I said, the p-value did not reach the significance level. Another thing that you can do is to click on confidence interval. So with the confidence interval, it generates the lower and upper bounds for the unstandardized regression estimates. And what we want to see here essentially is that between the lower and upper bound, zero should not be a possible value. So you will notice that in the predictors that are significant, zero is not a possible value. However, in autonomy, which did not meet the significance level, zero is a possible value between negative 0 0.008 and 0 0.436. So that is logistic regression. I hope that you learned something. Uh, and I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.